Om Pavanibhyo Vaishnavibhyo Namo Namaha Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shivasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So first of all, I would like to ask for blessings for all the assembled devotees. So I may speak something in live Shastra and something what you can use in your life. So it will be beneficial for you. So please offer me your blessings. <laughs> so audio translation again. It is far better to discharge one's prescribed duties, even though faultly, than another's duties perfectly. Destruction in the course of performing one's own duty is better than engaging in another's duties. For to follow another's path is dangerous. It's a little bit weird to give class, you know, like that, because now I can't hear anything, anybody's uh, reaction, but I'll try. <laughs> so, and this, this is actually very, very practical verse. And Bhagavad Gita, uh, it's very nice book. It's one of the best books what we distribute all the time to people, right? Uh, because it's full of instructions. It's full of clear instructions, what to do and how to do and um, to achieve real perfection in life, to achieve, you know, success and spiritual life and even in material life, right? And um, this particular verse, it talks about our duties, like, or we can say obligations, what we should do, what, what we expected to do from society, from ourselves and from Krishna also. And this is very instructive verse because uh, just to bring um, kind of the whole picture here, right? That what's going on on the battlefield of Kurukshetra. Lord Krishna talks to Arjuna and Arjuna talks to Krishna. They have conversation, right? And Arjuna, um, he didn't want to fight out of compassion, not out of fear, not out of, you know, uh, any kind of weakness, but out of compassion. He, when he saw all his relatives on the battlefield, right? He, he was ready to do it, but then he saw everyone and he got, you know, very overwhelmed with all the feelings to all his teachers, his, you know, grandfathers, like grand, grandfather Bhishma, right? His teacher, it's, well, it's, it's almost, well, it is impossible, right? How can you kill your own spiritual master, right? It's, you know, and, um, but also we have to remember that, uh, First, when you see in the first chapter of Bhagavad Gita, right, Arjuna, we know that he is pure devotee of Krishna, right? But by Krishna's arrangement, uh, he was put into this uh, so-called ignorance, right? That he started. We know that, that this Bhagavad Diva, he is, you know, sleeping out of his hands, right? And he's sitting, which is not supposed to be for Kshatriya, right? The Kshatriya is the one who is holding his uh, weapon all the time with him, especially in that yuga, right? And, but we see that he's just, um, he's not confident anymore. What is his duty, right? And what is, what is going on, right? And then we see that he approaches Krishna. He approaches Krishna and asks him that, you know, I don't know what to do anymore, right? I accept you as my spiritual master and you uh, guide me, please tell me what to do, right? And only from that moment, Krishna, you know, he accepts this position of his spiritual master because before he was just a friend. Right, and then he started instructing him, not before, right? Because it was Krishna, it was Arjuna's desire for him, right? And Krishna kind of, he waited for that because we know that it was arranged, right? All the situation was arranged to speak Bhagavad Gita. Similar, we see with Srimad Bhagavatam, right? That this kind of devotees, Kajuna Maharaj Pariksha, they cannot really, these are pure devotees of Krishna. They are pure devotees of the Lord. They cannot really be, um, you know, put into any kind of this mental difficulty. It's all arranged by Yoga Maya, out of love, Krishna. And you see that for Arjuna as a Kshatriya, right? What is the duty of a Kshatriya? Kshatriya, um, they are protect people, they rule, right? And 
like we like we see in this purport that Chilo Propat says that they uh, it's allowed for them to be violent, right? So it's their duty. And for Arjuna, well, out of compassion, and of course Arjuna he's not simple um, kshatriya, right? He's a kshatriya, but also he's a devotee. And we know that devotees they have really soft heart. They have soft heart, soft heart. And even if somebody does, you know, to them all so many good stuff, at some point they, they, they just forgiven, right? And we see it in Arjuna, that he was ready to forgive. But Krishna, and it was, um, well, Krishna told him that, you know, I can understand you, right? But all these people who are standing right now against you on the battlefield, right? Do you think they will be, you know, moved by your, you know, compassion? or by your kindness, no. They will just, you know, judge you so much. They will judge you and they will, you know, just, uh, you won't be able to live normally because your duty is a kshatriya. You have to really protect people and this is your duty, right? That's why, you know, stay, stay and fight, right? After all the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna told Arjuna. And, but what Arjuna, Arjuna's plan was not like that. <laughs> he wanted to, uh, well, accept sannyas, right? He wanted to just go to the forest. He said, you know, I'm not going to fight because it's, you know, I could just cannot kill. And also he puts these nice arguments, <laughs> which is nice from kind of materialistic perspective, uh, out of his, what he wanted, why he didn't want to fight. In first chapter of Bhagavad Gita, he says that, you know, um, we're not going to gain anything from that. Everything will be spoiled, you know, unwanted population, uh, all the men will be killed, right? All the, um, you know, everything will be destroyed completely, right? What will we gain, even if we get this kingdom to us? If we kill everyone, how are we going to enjoy? So he is thinking about his own thing, his own enjoyment, right? But then Krishna comes and he tells him that, you know, it's actually, it's not that simple, right? He kind of opens his eyes when he surrenders to him as his spiritual master. We pronounce this prayer, Omagyana Timirandasya, right? That my spiritual master, I was in the darkness of ignorance. And my spiritual master, he opens my eyes, right? With a torch of light. And the same we see here, that Arjuna, he, he's aware that he's Shikshatriya, but he just doesn't want to, you know, suffer even more from this decision what he makes, that he has to kill his fathers and his, you know, relatives. But this is his duty. Right, and uh, we come to the point that our duties we perform sometimes we like it, sometimes we don't, but we still have to do this, right? And in fact, this verse uh, from uh, Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says that it, it's 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 kind of beginning of Bhagavad Gita when he just starts saying this verse, and then also you see in 18th chapter we have similar verse, almost the same verse when at the, at the end, conclusion of Bhagavad Gita, right? Uh, when he says again, the same verse, that we have to describe our, we have to perform our, our prescribed duties, right? In this way, you will be very successful, no matter what it is. That's why, you know, uh, when, even when a regular person, right, says something like, you know, your mom tells you, or someone, you know, your kids that, you clean your room, right? You, when you say it two times, three times, clean your room, clean your room, clean your room, it must be, it must be yeah, done, right? It must be very serious, very important for her and for you also. And this is a regular person, right? What to speak about Krishna, when he says something twice, right? It, we, we must pay attention to that, right? That's why we see that um, prescribed duties are very important in performing our devotional service, in, in living our spiritual life. Because ultimately also, um, we, we're doing something all the time, right? What is devotional service, right? We go out, distribute books, we sell different things to people, we work, right, as software engineer, also for Krishna, right? You cook something, also for Krishna. This is action, you do something, right? So, and, and this is very important. And also Prabhupada mentioned that there is like two, um, uh, two types, right, of these duties, material and spiritual. So material refers to Varnashram Dharma. So according to your position, according to your ashrama in this life, 
right? And spiritual, it's whatever uh, comes from your spiritual master. And if you see these two, right, um, we have to do our material duties, but in the center is supposed to be our spiritual duties. So basically we have to serve our spiritual master through all different things that we do in our life. So we'll, we'll discuss that right now. <laughs> um, one point I wanted to mention, it's very um, important to understand that, well, we all have our duties, right? And um, it's all different. It's not like even, not even uh, two people have the same, the same, um, you know, duties. Because we see like everything has a purpose. Everything in material world, right? At least has a purpose, right? If you, you know, if you, everything was created for the purpose, right? We, we see all these cars. Before we didn't have cars, right? But then people wanted to go very fast from one point on Autobahn. I know in Germany, <laughs> big ones, right? In, in one hour, in 30 minutes, you can be in another city, right? Uh, just by, you know, um, riding this car, right? Or it has a purpose. They didn't create it just like, oh, you know, let's just create a car. What for? I don't know, let's just create it, right? They're like, yeah, we have a purpose to help people and let's just make it and people will be happy, right? And there's so many things. You know, we have a pen, right? Pen was created to you know, before books, what we distribute right now, they, they would be written on the palm leaf. It will take months, if not ages, right, to write one book. But then people create the pen and paper, right? And now we see one bag of guitar comes out in maybe in one second <laughs> from the printing press, which we can distribute. But, and everything has a purpose. The same with uh, us, right? Well, we, we can argue a lot, but Krishna has created us, right? We don't really belong to ourselves and Krishna has created us. What for? What for? Even though we fall down from spiritual world, yes, it's our own desire, but in this material world, we have a purpose. And when we understand that purpose, life becomes much easier and much more interesting and much more, um, Mm, how can I say, like you, you have really what to live for, right? Like an idea, you know, like when people, you see it, these people, when they have really purpose in life, they, you know, it brings them so much peace of the mind and it brings so much confidence that they do something. It can be right, it can be wrong, you know, but they're really <laughs> determined to do such thing, right? And they think it's their purpose. So purpose is like a living force. You know, if you have a purpose to wake up in the morning, if you know that, you know, Mongol Arti, right, and Jagannath is waiting for you there, right, you'll be happy to wake up. Well, if you're not on that little platform, at least, <laughs> you know, we can just wake up and, and, and think, you know, my spiritual master would be really pleased with that. You know, if I wake up right now at four and go to the temple, right, and you have a purpose, you know, to go downstairs. Because if you just wake up, you know, and you're like, ah, oh, you know, I don't know, Chanting, chanting, I can do at 2 p.m. today. This I can do at 3 p.m. Oh, I don't need to wake up. There's no purpose, right? No living force, you know? So it's, it needs to be there. And we actually, so many things we create ourselves, right? Like out of, you know, you can put affirmations uh, when you wake up, right? For example, and just practice it during the day. But also in, in a, on a whole, Krishna has a purpose for us. That's why we're all different. We're all different. And it's, well, we can do uh, the same services, right? You know, but people are all different. And even that, that, you know, it's like a, it's not even outside, right? But inside, we have different qualities. We have different talents. We have different personalities, right? These values inside. And Nobody has this specific combination, what you have. <laughs> Nobody else. No one else. In, not in this world, but not in three worlds. <laughs> Nobody else. It's, it's kind of uniqueness, right? And there is question, right? Why it's like that? If there is no purpose, you know, just for fun, like, you know, why it's like that? 
because you know first of all we have to remember that krishna is a person and he is you know he's a person he look at all this world right all this nice you know different kind of birds i yesterday saw on facebook this um picture of the uh leaves you know somebody has leaves on his hand right but actually it's the insects they look like leaves <laughs> It's really amazing because, you know, how creative he must be, right? Like how creative he must be. And, and the same with us, right? Like he, it would be so boring if we were all the same, you know? Like it, it would be so boring, even for Krishna. But he's not boring. He's, he's the funniest person. And that's why we create it, right? Like in, in a very, very different way. But also because all of us has different purposes in this life right and in our krishna consciousness right in, in uh there are two ways also how to really use it right we all have different talents different qualities different nice characteristics in us right and usually people who devoid of this spiritual life who don't practice anything like that well they they are very successful right if they know how to use these talents these uh qualities but usually it brings um not the best qualities in people for example when you um because usually when when on material planet means that you do everything for yourself you use all your nice talents for yourself if you know how to play nicely right you would be playing you'll become rich and famous right and then you'll have so much pride right and well it won't lead you anywhere good right or if you know how to even you know this is a simple example how to sell things right some people they can sell anything to you <laughs> like anything it doesn't matter what you give them it's just a talent right like vashias they have this talent and they can sell anything and what you plan they would sell they would cheat people you know how we know with all this gold right like people really cheating you you know like it's you know they ask so much money and or even uh in the stores right people create new things right and they sell it for hundred dollars hundred euro right but actually to make this thing it costs five euro but you know because it goes through many different things and because you know i want this money you know i created it i have this pride you know i need this money i did it for that purpose you know you have to give me money and actually money also the purpose of money it's interesting because money um in india they call it lakshmi lakshmi is the goddess of fortune right what is it meant for to serve, to serve Krishna, to serve Narayan, right? To serve Narasimhade. <laughs> I just read about that. And but if you if you don't if you have no idea about that, right? You just want money. You don't want Krishna right next to it. You just want Lakshmi, right? And you use it and you use it and you use it. But then you know it's uh, Lakshmi. Uh, it uh, she she is called Chanchal, which means um, very restless never in the same place right you know how fortune is right like sometimes we are fortunate sometimes we're not so you know especially we don't play these games right but well uh, i was in mahabharat and about this it's with kshatriya tradition to play this um um gambling right to to gamble and you can see that sometimes you know all this uh kind of good luck on their side sometimes it's not but you cannot really you know it's just comes and go right Com comes and goes and this is how lakshmi is right she's but we know that she is always this um supreme personality of godhead she's at his feet all the time serving his lotus feet right that's why when you get krishna automatically like lakshmi comes to you but people don't know about it. that's why you know they really strive for this money and it really brings misery if it's devoid from, from supreme personality of godhead right whereas on the spiritual platform right when we use it in the right way right for krishna right the same talents the same qualities the same you know abilities what we have it brings us so much happiness and so much enjoyment and you don't really depend on a result this is a spiritual platform right and it, it, it says that we have to act according to our nature but what does it mean you know to act according according to our nature this is a platform where you just do something right and it doesn't matter to you what kind of result will come you know for example people like to cook right they just like to cook and even 
if things are bad, even everything just fall apart, right? They not really uh, disturbed by that because they thinking, well, that's okay. Now I know it's not working, right? But someone who is, you know, trying for result, right? Trying to cook for Catherine for the restaurant, right? They they will be completely, you know, disturbed by that, right? Because I won't I won't get this money, I won't get these people. But on the spiritual platform, we just when you just do it for Krishna and it's your nature right? You, you don't care about that, you know, whether it's good, whether it's bad, you know, okay. Or with the book distribution we see, right? Or with the business, any kind of things. So, because on the spiritual platform, we offer everything to Krishna. We don't take anything for ourselves. And if every, anything comes to us, right, we will be, you know, okay with that. If nothing comes, okay, I'll just keep doing it. And this is what you feel. This is what you feel. Because you cannot really give it up. You just like it. <laughs> you know, even if they don't pay me, well, it's okay, I'll do it. Hobby, right? Like we say, hobby, you know, like that. Well, we have to work, I, we know, right? To get any kind of living. But um, it's very important to really come to this platform that um, we use our talents and qualities in Krishna consciousness to, to um, dedicate everything to Krishna. Right. And when we understand that there is this uniqueness, right, that you are unique in, in a good way, not, you know, kind of give you pride or anything like that, but in a way that Krishna gave you some kind of purpose in this life. Right. And only you can make it. Only you can do it. <laughs> this particular purpose. It can be it can be huge, like for Srila Prabhupada. Right. We see that, you know, he used all his talents. He was a businessman. He was um all his different talents, but just to serve his spiritual master order. Everything, everything was put into it. That's what it was very successful. And yeah, in fact, when we use this, uh, all these things in Krishna's service, he'll be happy and we'll be happy. So nobody, nobody is in a, you know, a bad situation. Everybody is happy, right? Whereas on the material platform, we will have this, you know, so much of this disappointment all the time. Because it's just, you know, barking on the wrong tree, right? And you, I think you know this phrase. When you just try to get something, but not from that cause, right? Not from right, you know, you just bark on the wrong tree. You put your, uh, how do you call it? Um, anyway, okay. So, and also I heard one thing that if we don't use our talents in Krishna consciousness, it means that we neglect it and Krishna can take it away. So don't take a risk. <laughs> Let's see. I had also, uh, it also says, Ashila Prabhupada says that um, when you do somebody else's duty, it is dangerous. Right? Why is it dangerous? You know, why can I just do something what, you know, other person do, right? First of all, why do you want to do something what other person do? We see someone nicely playing harmonium, right? And then, you know, we're thinking, I want to play like that, <laughs> you know? And then some kind of envy comes, right? Because we want to get something what this person has and I don't have. It can be, you know, something uh, physical. It can be talents, right? But, you know, and... In this situation, it's better to, uh, because if you, if you start doing it, right, and if, it, well, it's, it depends on, of course, motivation, right? Of course, you can learn how to learn, uh, how to um, play harmonium, right? But if motivation is wrong, that you think that, you know, okay, I was cooking for 30 years in this temple, but I don't want to cook it anymore, you know? I just want to play harmonium. Now I'm going to become a great harmonium player, <laughs> right? And you learn and you learn and then you give up all this, you know, cooking stuff, right? And then, you know, you might become a good harmonium, harmonium player, right? But, well, devotees will be suffering because they won't get nice food from you, <laughs> right? What they really appreciate is what you're really good in. You see? Or I heard this one story about um, one man who had a uh, donkey and a dog right and well we know the duty of the dog right the dog he's barking right and he is you know 
uh, chasing away different people, right? He's pro protecting, right? And Danke, he's a worker, right? Like a Shudra, <laughs> right? He's a worker. He just helps the man, right? To, you know, the owner to do different things. And then, so this uh, Danke was, um, you know, he's working hard all the time all the time he would help his owner but dog he's just lying down somewhere you know doesn't do anything and like sleeping all the time and then donkey was thinking you know like why this dog is lying all the time and and, and the owner loves him so much you know i should do the same thing you know or i should i should you know um try to do something what he does that the owner will will, will, will like me more right and then uh, one situation happens that um in the night um the thieves coming into this house right and the dog is sleeping right and then donkey sees it right and he and he's thinking oh my god this is great opportunity to serve my owner right and then just uh, chase them away right and then donkey starts you know making all these weird noises what donkey makes <laughs> it's not exactly like barking right but it, it becomes so loud right and then uh, his owner wake, wakes up right and he's thinking oh my god what's going on this donkey maybe something happened to him you know he sounds like he's ill or something like that you know let me go and check and then while he was going downstairs right the uh thieves they were thinking oh my god what's going on with this donkey we should go it's so loud in here you know we should probably you know run away from here right and they ran away and then donkey was very pleased with that and owner comes to him and he sees that, you know, donkey is yelling, screaming, you know, after, you know say this noise. And, but he's very happy, you know, well, they kind of talk to the owner, right? But he's very happy and he's like, oh, you know, now owner will, you know, give me nice food and he will love me so much like a dog, right? But then owner, he's like, oh my God, what happened to you, donkey? You know, like, it's, are, you, are you hurt or something like that? And then he sees that actually everything is right. Everything is okay. Donkey is not hurt, you know, and, and then he becomes very angry because he's thinking, why he woke me up in the middle of the night, right? And, and he starts beating Donkey very badly, <laughs> right? And then he goes away to sleep, and then Dogs wakes up, right? And he's, he's looking at Donkey, and he says, What's, what happened to you? And he told him a whole story. He, and Dog says, why you didn't wake me up? You know, why you didn't wake me up? I would chase them away, everyone would be happy, right? So, and this is actually a very great lesson here, that, you know, when, you, when we try to do some, someone else's duty, right, it can be dangerous, right? Or there is also a story, because it's not duty of the donkey, right, to chase away people. His duty, his, his, you know, his nature to work, to help in different way. It doesn't mean that he doesn't help, right, to, to the person, to the man. But it's different from dogs, right? They don't even have ability, you know? He cannot even bark or to speak other things, right? And there are many different um, aspects of this kind of duty, right? We see also when you're in a position of, um, you know, mother, father, kids, or, you know, it's, it's completely different duties, right? I heard also the story that mother was telling her daughter that, you know, don't, um, don't listen to the uh this kind of karmic music so-called karmic music right because you know they were devotees and then the daughter said okay yeah no problem and then you know she was going to school and then these girls they started you know kind of seeing all these karmic songs right and then this girl she said you know what you're not supposed to sing that <laughs> right why are you singing that you you know you're not supposed to you you should sing only Hare krishna maha mantra right and then of course they you know they kind of like became uh, a little bit disturbed with her right and they're like you know why are you telling us that right like you know we what we want and you know it started like a whole conflict because of that and this girl you know she was thinking she learned the right thing right she comes back to mom and she says you know mom uh, this situation happened in the school today and i did what you did to me right but it wasn't appreciated at all and then her mom said you know you well, I will just tell you right now also, right? Because it wasn't the right thing to do, right? We have to understand that the position is different. She has an authority as a mother, right? To tell something to people, to, you know, to instruct his child. But this child, she didn't have any authority, right? The same we see here with Krishna, that only when Arjuna asked Krishna, 
Krishna started telling him, you know, he put him on the position of spiritual master, right? He gave him this, uh, you know, duty, you know, I'm taking shelter of you. You have to teach me. It's a duty of spiritual master, you know, to teach us, right? Like that. So it's very interesting. That's why it can be dangerous. People can, you know, misunderstand these things, right? And it's very important to understand what our duties are. And this is kind of on material realm, right? But on the spiritual realm, what, which is higher than any material, um, it is a duty to serve our spiritual master, to try to connect everything to the order. This really great example of Srila Prabhupada, right? And so many devotees who really con connect all their life to the mission of Srila Prabhupada. And when we on this position, right, it says that we can act well according, sometimes we can be in a kshatriya kind of position, right? When you have to rule people, right? We have, for example, you know, uh, book distribution team or business team, right? Okay, you, uh, your nature is a brahmana, right? Let's say, and you just want to read books. You just want to change up and read books, you know, and teach people like that, right? But also, you know, when it comes to, um, sometimes we have to really have this, you know, uh, kshatriya nature, because we have to lead people out on book distribution, for example, right? You have to be this leader, even though, you know, you don't have maybe that nature, but you have to do this duty, you know, out of, because you have to do it, right? This, this was, this was um, really, you know, it, it was instructed to you, it was given to you by your authorities that, you know, you, you should do it. And, in this way, when you when we just understand when we have to do something for Krishna for devotees, and no matter what is my nature is, right? It's you become really peaceful, confident and peaceful because you detach yourself from the result. You know, I was asked to do that. You know, and I can do my really best. You know, and whatever comes out of that, you know, it 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 will be will be okay. It will be okay anyway. You know, because there is no good or bad, like, you know, no, in Krishna consciousness. We always can learn different things, even if it's, you know, so-called bad happens. Like that. So it's very important to really um, use it everything. Mm -hmm. So let's see if there are any um, corrections, questions, um, realizations. Would be nice to hear from you. Okay, if somebody has a question, I think the easiest if is um, whoever has a question, he can switch on the mic and post or yeah say the question, and um, yeah then we hear the answer. Or if they have some comments, of course, also. Actually, I have one question. Okay. Since my mic is on, <laughs> so maybe <laughs> just uh, because, um, like you were saying, we have our duty, so we are have our nature practically. The nature and the duty is connected, right? So, um, and but then you also said, or did I get it right that if uh, sometimes we have to do something for Krishna, like you said, okay, lead people out on Sankirtan, for example, even though it's not like really our nature but it's just a duty which has to be performed but since it's for krishna it's um it's something which has to be done is that um so uh what is but then still i asked what uh, on my question the question comes up for me what is the, the balance like um when uh so how much should i try to understand what is my nature and um pre practically which also means like doing things which I, I feel like inclined to do and how much should I try to um, yeah, do something for the mission, for example, which maybe might not be my nature. So uh, how do we find a balance? So yeah, that's, that's one question. Yeah. Thank you for the next question. Yes, I try to answer. Uh, so basically, uh, how to keep balance between our nature, right? Kind of finding our nature and performing our duties, right? This is, I, I, I believe this is the question, right? So, first of all, we have to really think that we can 
uh, connect everything to Krishna, right? Even like so-called not really what I want to do, right? Like, you know, it's kind of, it's my nature. It's not my duty. I just want to do that, right? You can connect this to Krishna and this is nothing wrong with that. You can, you know, you, we can do everything for Krishna. And it doesn't, you know, it's like, it's like with the prayers, right? Sometimes we pray very nicely that, okay, yes, you know, surrendering, that's it, today's the day, right? But sometimes we're praying that, you know, Krishna, I cannot offer you anything good today, you know? I have envy in my heart and greed right now, and I don't know what to do with that, right? And it's not exactly I want to offer that, but I'm still offering that, right? This is part of surrender. The same is our, you know, our nature, right? When we want to do something it doesn't mean that you have to forget krishna that's not my duty you know i'm sorry krishna but i'm gonna do it right like it's it's okay and it's very important and the balance is as long as you feel um you know you have to feel you have to feel uh comfortable and confident and enthusiasm you know these these kind of things even like we have to do our okay let's say we have to do our work right we have to work different companies right you just have to do it and maybe you don't like it but you have to do it but at the same time you have to have really uh something when you come back to your house even you know anywhere uh and this sacred space and not only physical but uh, in, in in your heart also right where you just you know where you just do kind of you know where you just um nourish yourself where you nourish yourself because if we just go in like that okay i i hate cooking you know but i have to cook and i cook and i cook and i cook and i cook and then i just give up everything you know because i hate cooking right like that so even though there's understanding it there right that okay you know probably have to cook for devotees and that's why we have intelligence to understand it. But still, it's not really my nature. I want to read books right now, right? So you just put aside this time. Put aside enough for you that, you know, you will feel nourished and you will just go on with your service. It's like, you know, Sankirtan also. It's a very, very good example because it's everything in there, right? It's very active when we're going out and we're distributing books. It's active. Some, even like previous, before, right, from uh Prabhupada's disciples right people didn't have devotees didn't have time to read books right and then she broke out made this comment that you know i printed these books not only for distribution not for selling but for you to read to become pure devotees and go back home back to godhead right so he has to he had to give this kind of instruction because people were really you know into book distribution they didn't do anything else but it's important everything is important so balance my spiritual master says that balance, it's not that we stand in steel, that you, you know, kind of, okay, 50, 50, 50%, 50%. Balance is, and if you try, if you want to try, when you're standing on one feet, right? You don't stand in steel, you're balancing. It means that sometimes, right, one day, uh, there is a Master Sankirtan festival, right? And at the same day, it's a, um, <laughs> uh, you know, so there's no time, even chant your rounds, right? You know, well, but at, at some point, right, you'll have to do this, you know, kind of your natural, what you really like, what nourishes you, maybe 10% only, and the rest you have to do your duty, 90% these days, right? But at some point, you can do 60% of what you really like and what nourishes you, and then only 40% your duties. You know what I mean? Like it's a balance. It's like when we balancing all the time. Because we, we don't feel ev every day the same. Even during the day, we don't feel the same, right? We all the time feel, you know, sometimes I need to do this more, I need to do this more, right? But sometimes you feel so fired up and you really to work hard whole day long, right? Like that. I hope it's answering your question. At least it's my experience is what I do. <laughs> yes, thank you. It was... Uh... I mean, I think there's many answers to the question, but this was giving a, a very nice um, explanation. And you know, we I would speak about in our realizations. <laughs> you cannot speak more, <laughs> so forgive me if it's not answering. But <laughs> no, it answered my question. It was good. Thank you. Is there any reflections? Also, reflections are easy. You don't have to ask. <laughs> you can just say what you remembered. 
Um, I'm, I'm very grateful uh, that you choose this word, Matashi. Thank you, thank you so much. I hope my, my English is good enough. Uh, I, uh, I have um, a balance question too. It's, it's not really, uh, uh, it's, it had not totally to, uh, to do with uh, your lecture, but it's really a problem for me. I have so, uh, so rare uh, uh, devotee uh, association. I have a problem with balanced and chanting, mm -hmm. and um, uh, I chant only uh, four years, uh, uh, the full uh, the full number of rounds, and uh, I have the problem. At, at the beginning, uh, it took one and a half hour to uh, to chant uh, sixteen rounds, and uh, now I have the problem. I, I I need three hours to chant sixty rounds. I have always problems with that. My mind is distracted. Is uh, that I that I have maybe material things on my list or something like this. And I maybe somebody has a tip uh, for me how I can give a good have good a good balance in in chanting. Uh, I try to learn from. Sachinanda Maharaj now he gives a living name retreat uh, regularly on uh, on on Sunday and I uh, maybe it has it has to do with my lot of offenses uh, against uh, against the holy name that uh, that now I I attended sometimes a lot more than sixteen rounds uh, but now uh, Krishna gives me three hours to make sixteen rounds. <laughs> And uh, thank you so much for the nice question. <laughs> Appreciate you know your listen. Well, chanting, you see, in chanting, the most important thing is um, um, when you consistent consistency. Consistency means when you do the same thing every day, and it's better at the same time. But of course, we know that you know uh, there is a uh, so many things to do also, right? Especially as a you know. Grihasta, or you know, when don't live in a temple, maybe right? It's it's just so many things to do, right? How can you find a time even to chant this, you know, sixteen rounds, right? And in this way, it's it's really um, it's good to keep this consistency. If you well, it's normal if you know some devotees, right? They you're not initiated devotees, right? They start from, for example. Mm -hmm. huh? I'm not initiated too. I'm, mm -hmm. I'm not initiated. So it's 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 a good, you know, obviously that you, or you know we chant sixteen rounds, right? But sometimes at some point, you know, I am not encouraged to chant less or something. But what's more important, uh, consistency. If you chant, for example, eight rounds, right? Chant them every day. Chant them, you know, months, years, right? And increase, but never decrease. Because if, you know, because our mind works like that, you know, when you just put so much into it, right? For example, today I'm chanting, okay, 32 rounds. Yes, let's do it, right? And then, you know, and tomorrow you chant two rounds, right? Like that. So the mind, um, mind is like a muscle. You know, when we do exercise, right? You do every day this exercise, yoga or something, right? And then you grow muscle, right? But you have to do it every day. The same thing every day right and you can increase but never decrease because if you decrease your muscle will you know become less like stronger right but if you increase it will become stronger and stronger the same with our mind our mind is material thing our mind is a uh, you know is uh, is also like a muscle and through the chanting we train our mind you know so it's nice to really uh, and again it's a really important quality. I know also His Holiness Sachinand Maswami stresses it a lot, the quality, mm -hmm. right? That, um, you know, it's better to chant less rounds, but with the more concentration than to chant more rounds just for the sake of quantity. So we have to figure it for ourselves, you know, but I would say that consistency, try to do it, you know, all the time and also the same time because the same time mind also uh you know right when you when when, when you kind of um try to do it in the different times of the day sometimes there is exception yes but you know on a, on a regular basis um uh, mind becomes also you know like it's hard to control it because you know for example during the day right it's like more the fashion 
during the night mode of ignorance, in the morning mode of goodness. So it's best to chant in the morning, right? But sometimes it's not really, for some people they work in the morning and they cannot do it. But the point is at one time you can try this and see how it works and the same amount of rounds. I, thank you very much. I, I, I do it regularly between 7 and 10. And mm. uh, the problem for me is that, uh, that I have to make uh, at this time uh, the, the basis of my day because I mm. have no devotee association at my place and uh, uh, I live in a mixed partnership. And, and I, I, need, I need this, um, this time and, uh, and yeah. uh, the first part of the day to, uh, to uh, to be not so much in Maya, <laughs> because without chanting and reading, I I feel totally totally lost in in Maya and in this uh, material uh, relationships. Yeah. Yeah, you see, you feel it. It's good. It's a taste. Uh, it's, yes. it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. <laughs> yeah. But also, you know that it's it's um you can also break them. You know, for example, in the morning you can chant like eight rounds, right? And then the rest eight rounds or something like that, like during the day when you have a time. Also, this is what devotees practicing. So kind of break the rounds because you know many devotees have to cook in the morning and all this mm. all the work, right? And mm. this is practice what it uses, you know. Mm. And I've been seeing on on myself, you know, that sometimes like I'm chanting, and then at some point I become very, very disturbed by something, right? And then I'm like, okay, let me just finish. It's only four rounds left. And you're like, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. But then I'm thinking, what's the point of that? You know, let me just, you know, put it aside. Don't worry, relax. Put it aside, you know, and then take another, you know, hour, 30 minutes to chant it later on during the day. Mm. You know? So, my own practice. <laughs> Thank you very much, Matashi. Thank you so much. Happy that it would help. So I don't know about the timings. Yes, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess um, we we can make a stop here. Um, Agera is coming. Maybe she has a question. Oh, so maybe one question is there from the temple room. I don't know. There's somebody in front it's of the camera. Happy in there. This is amazing. Yes, sorry. I hope this will be a short uh, answer or question. <laughs> Sorry. A bit louder, Gerda. A bit louder. Yeah. I, I was wondering how. What are the symptoms uh, uh, when I'm uh, what like fulfilling someone else's duties? What's your experience? Like oh. in social service or in material uh, obligations? Uh, so, what's What's your experience? When you don't, it is a nice question. When you don't, well, it's basically when you uh, when you fulfill somebody when you do somebody else's duties. What? How can you recognize it, right? <laughs> like that, you know. Well, we have to also kind of track ourselves. What's the intention behind things? What we do, right? If intention just to, you know, I just want to do it. You know, I just want to do it. Not, you know, not to please. Uh, uh you know anybody right by, by something but just like you know i just want to do it right this is good but if the intention just you know oh i will get for that something you know i'll be praised for that if i lead nice kids and right now you know probably devotees will, read, will be reading, you know like well it's also kind of transcendental right and it's not that bad if you want to please devotees but on the material plan if you want to get out of it something you know when you distribute books many <laughs> I'm just book this, you know, distribute book. That's why I have so many examples. <laughs> and for example, when you want, um, um, there is money involved, right, in that. And when you do it, but you won't do it for yourself, for your, you know, I just, I will get money out of that. You know, I will get money out of that. I'll be, you know, rich. I'll buy this and this and that, right? Or if there is will be pride, you know, I will be elevated to the higher position in my, you know, somewhere work right basically you depend on the result it means it's not really your duty right you know you you ask this uh, reaction from others because if you just do your thing you know you you're really peaceful in heart and you you know and you know it's very interesting because there are different moments can happen in our life you know it's not you know 
it, it can happen, you know, we just follow different things and we have different an artist in the heart, right? At least myself, <laughs> right? And it's hard to understand sometimes. But Krishna says also to Arjuna in the Bhagavad Gita, right, that, uh, you know, okay, you can give up right now, right? You can give up all this Kshatriya stuff, right? But eventually you will come to that. You won't be happy with that. You know, your nature will bring you to that. You know, your nature will, will you know, you'll be suffering in this sannyas order, you know. Your thing is killing people, you know, all this, you know, uh, justice, right? But if you don't do that, you will be suffering from that. You know, your heart will be suffering, right? And when you're happy, when you feel calm and nice, it means it's your thing. Maybe it's not the most prestigious thing, you know. So many devotees, they um, kind of get this um, vision that, okay, only, you know, this teaching, right? Like, okay, distributing books. This is the best thing ever. You know, from Krishna's position, from Krishna's position, he sees us, everyone the same. For him, whether you distribute books, whether you uh, clean pots on a kitchen, whether you're cooking, whether you cleaning floor, you know, it doesn't matter to him. He sees us as devotional service. The same platform, all of them, you know. But for us, because we are so, you know, contaminated with all this pride that, yeah, I'm better than this, I'm better than that. But they should not. It's not like that, you know. And when we, when we have this something, even if it's very small, but it's not small, again, but you're happy with that. Stick to that, you know. And if some, something else comes, you know, it's fine, you know, you do it. But again, eventually, it, your real nature, it will, you know, shine out of you like that. You won't be able to do something what you, you know, don't like or it's not your thing for long, you know. Yeah, thank you very much. I, thank you. Thank you very much. I, okay, of course, I was hoping for some um, outward uh, things too uh, from, from oh. the outside because sometimes, yeah, I'm wondering, is it my mind? Is it my ego? <laughs> what drives me to do that? And yeah, okay so yeah this was cool too of course but yeah you mean at work right or something like outside you mean they're coming someone comes to you and like says something to you like some, some signs from the alpha so that i can be sure <laughs> somehow that it's not your thing that that you're supposed to do yeah. so oh. yeah but this you know, answer is a perfect answer this is of course you mean devotees right now or non-devotees who ask you yeah, devotees or just the usual people surrounding you, but yeah. yeah. Well, if it's not exactly devotees, right, we know that we have regulations, stick to them, you know, it's kind of, if it's not really in there, like, you know, if somebody asks you to cook uh, crepes with eggs, maybe this is not the best thing what you want to do, right, like that, right? Even if it's your friends, right? So it's regulatory principles. But with devotees also, you know, there is no harm in doing things. Only if, you know, again, balance in timings also supposed to be. Because, you know, if you're just going out of your way to serve everyone, right? At some point, you will end up that, you know, I'm not satisfied with anything, you know, because I don't do my thing like that. So as long as you have time and you feel comfortable, it's, it's no harm to do, you know, many different things. But at some point, it's like, you know, when people move into the temple first, right? They, people see that, oh my God, this is a good person, you know? Let's engage him or her everywhere, <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> the DD service, cooking, cleaning, everything. But then this person, oh my God, you know, what is it? You know, I kind of do so much, you know? It's also balance, but you will get there. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really appreciate all your association. You beautiful thing. Very light. Okay. Thank you very much uh, for giving the lecture today. I hope we have you an, on another time again. The chance to hear from you. Yeah, my pleasure. Thank you so much. And uh, yeah, so we will close now here. And um, the whole thing will be put on uh, YouTube. I, that's okay for you. Yeah, I guess. We have a <laughs> And yeah. uh, once more, Lord Jagannath in the bird and the oh, yeah. All his mercy. Yes. Okay. Thank you so much for a great opportunity. I really appreciate that. And also happy to see you. Yeah, see. we're also happy to see you. And thank you so much. And hope to see you soon again. Yes. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.